salutations, my friends. I am he who is called Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. I have a sad, sad tale to tell this day. A tale of love, loss, regret, revenge, and murder most foul. A tale told by the masterful hands of Mr. Tim Burton, who knows a thing or two about the macabre. A tale that goes by the name of Corpse Bride. Released in 2005, Corpse Bride is Tim Burton's second foray into stop motion after the acclaimed Nightmare Before Christmas. Featuring the voices of Burton regulars Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter, alongside such luminaries as Joanna Lumley, Jane Horrocks and even Paul Whitehouse, this is a gentle introduction to the end of us all. So then my friends, stay a while and hear my tale. The Tale of the Corpse Bride It's a grey morning in a Victorian-era town where an arranged marriage is being, well, arranged. Now while there are songs in this film, I'd hardly call it a musical in the classical sense of the word. Victor, son of the Van Dort Fish Empire, and Victoria, daughter of penniless nobility, are not exactly formally introduced yet they seem to get on well enough. The rigmarole of the wedding rehearsal proves too much, however. This hand. Oh. Oh. Oh, mm. oh. Have you ever had one of those days? And young Master Van Dort aways to nature. In the clearing, young Victor seems much bolder. I ask you to be mine. But the branch is not what it appears. Fearing for his life, Victor flees. Our protagonist awakens in the land of the dead. Clearly confused, our protagonist demands answers which are delivered in the form of song. Long story short, a stranger stole her heart, her jewels, and her life. Remember this detail, it's important. Back in the land of the living, the assembled families await Victor's return. But Lord Barkis has some bad news. Songs of a mystery woman! Melodrama! It's pretty terrible. Let's instead see how things are faring in the land of the dead. Victor is naturally perturbed by the unfamiliar land of the dead and again flees. Could have used the stairs, silly. But upon receiving the gift of his long departed pet, his attitude softens. Oh, what a cutie. You should have seen him with fur. <laughs> Still, the living world beckons and our protagonists visit Elder Gutnecht who casts a spell returning them to the world above. Spell eggs, eh? Can't say I've ever seen their like before. Which leads Victor to return to Victoria instead. All of this, of course, leads to a terrible misunderstanding, and our poor Victor is caught in the middle. And love triangles too now. What in Bree's name am I watching? Cue another musical number as a maggot and a spider attempt to convince Emily, the titular corpse bride, of her own worth. Now, in case you didn't know, and I'm guessing you probably didn't, the face and voice of the bride's maggot friend is actually a caricature of old-timey actor Peter Lorre. Why not give it a Google and see what you find? But Victoria won't be denied and escapes her mansion in search of her man. Sadly, Pastor Goldswell is no use, and Victoria is returned to her room. Let me go! Thank you, Pastor Goldswell. Which is where Lord Barkis steps in. Really? 
did it now. Have you worked it out? Have you put two and two together? Victor and Emily reconcile at the piano. But the newly deceased coachman has some bad news from above. And worse, the wedding goes off without a hitch. Right, I am sick of all this grey. Emergency colour burst! Sorry about that. But I really couldn't cope with all oh, that grey. But Victor decides to be brave and agrees to a proper wedding with Emily. You don't have to. <gasps> In other news, <laughs> which actually turns out better than you'd think. But Lord Barkis discovers the horrible truth. Victor and Emily begin the ceremony. So now she regrets snatching Victor away from his living bride. I'll spare you the rant. We're almost done. L let's just get to the finale. Let's get to the finale. And all would end well. How touching. <laughs> If not for the villainous cad, Barkis Bittern. But oh dear. And the consequences finally catch up with him. And so we close this tale as Emily departs both worlds. So then, my friends, I present to you the story of the Corpse Bride. And a grim little tale it is. Wholly unworthy I feel for my house of love. It was damned from the start. A movie about the Victorian era and tragic romance? The subject matter alone was enough to turn me away, and yet Burton does his best to make it work. The hateful Everglot caricatures, stern authority figures as they are, are suitably vile, and the Van Dorts are cheerfully cockney, Paul Whitehouse pitch perfect as ever. The visuals are Burtonesquely beautiful, and while the supporting cast is woefully underused, what there is of them is entertaining. But the tale is mired in melodrama, and I'm afraid I'm no fan of that. All in all, I'm not dying to see this again, but it won't kill you to give it a watch. And with these words, I thank you for your patronage, and invite you to join me next week as we return to fun and frolics. Fare thee well.